Thanks, Catherine. And I, I want to say, Paul and Howard, you guys did a great job with uh, you know throwing out statistics and actual you know marketplace impacts. And, and I think some of the things that I'm going to touch on definitely talk about you know the marketplace and and you know the impacts for the employer. But what I'm specifically going to touch on is uh, the, a few tools that Highmark has um, has put out into the market to really get uh, employers to where they need to be or understand the impacts of where they need to go uh, as we get closer to uh, 2014. Uh, so the tools that I'm going to talk about specifically are uh, healthcare reform planner tool and my benefits private exchange. Um, the private exchange is uh, a single carrier platform that, that Highmark has created and our healthcare reform planner tool is a um, as a tool that Highmark also created internally that will uh, assist assist some of the employers to make uh, you know decisions more scenario planning type decisions. So I'm going to first start with the healthcare reform planner tool, and you can see on the screen there there are two pieces to this tool. On the left side of the page it says understand the facts. Inside that is a it's actually a video that talks about the impacts for employers under the Affordable Care Act, what changes, what things will directly impact, impact those employers. And then on the right side is the simulator. And the simulator is what I'm going to focus more on today. I'm going to show you a few screenshots of what the simulator looks like and how that um, can help an employer make some decisions moving forward. So the, the first scenario I'm going to show here is uh, just a really generic example of left side of the screen is a employer sponsored plan current and right side of the screen is what an employer exact plan that they were in 2012 might look like in 2014 and we're just looking at it from contribution standpoint and you can see on the left side uh, you have an annual cost of 1 million and then on the right side just with uh, traditional increase of rates and market trends you see that that same plan going from one year to the next um, is 1.1 million so you, you have you know, just an initial impact on an everyday uh, traditional rate increase. On the bottom of the screen, you can see that there are other factors down here. Um, it shows that average cost for an employee might have been $800, and then those uh, increases of rates and market trends may push that to, on the right side, you'll see it was 882. So these are just examples of um, the small, the small in increases that will have big impacts uh, to the overall for some employer sponsored coverage. So the next example that I have here, this shows some real time modifications. This tool has the ability to actually show how the cost shifting will imp impact employees. You can see the two red squares at the bottom of the page. On the left hand side, that is their traditional coverage, the same that uh, you saw on the first slide. But then on the right hand side, it's showing the impact if the employer would lower their contribution amount. So you can see on the left hand side it's a 70-30 employer to employee split, but on the right side that they changed that to a 55-45 split. And you, the contribution amount for the employer changes, but it then also shows on the, on the right side of the screen what the employee cost is going to do. It's going to raise the employee cost and in some cases um, you know 3.6 percent for an employee and that's a you know significant increase in most cases for an employee in most cases it's it's larger than what their pay increase was um, just over a regular inflation rate so uh, this is a really easy scenario to look at and really see the big difference in the shift if employers do start shifting some of that responsibility to the employees and, and those easy impacts that that will uh, will come from that and the last example that I have here is this, this one is basically dropping coverage altogether. And what impact does that have for that employee? So left side, again, it's that current plan basically saying 2014, this is if you stayed in that same plan. And on the right side showing this is the impact if, you're, if you would drop this, uh, drop your coverage and, and go let your folks go to the retail marketplace. It actually increases cost for this uh, for this example. It shows that there are uh, you know there are three hundred and twenty four thousand dollars in penalties and one point two million to make those employees whole. Uh, and those are some of the impacts that people 
aren't realizing until they see uh, a tool like this or they have a consultant come in and, and talk them through the penalties and the impacts, uh, what that means to payroll and things like that for them. Uh, it, and it's an easy thing to just say, I want to drop coverage because they, they believe that it's going to be best for them. But there are a lot of hidden penalties and a lot of hidden fees that um, they aren't accounting for. On the right side of this page, you can see it also shows these are the side effects of dropping coverage and what it will happen. Uh, it impacts productivity, recruiting and retention, and the perception of that employer in general. So there are other things that are impacting, uh, in, impacting that employer, not just the fact that they could save or, um, or just get out of medical benefits at all. It, it gives them a real life example of these are the things that you're going to see and the impacts that uh, this is going to cause. So the last, uh, the last slide on the reform planner tool is a summary report. So what this basically does is after you would sit down with an employer and go through the, um, the scenarios that we, the, those few pages that we went through, you have the ability to then download this into a nice PDF brochure for that uh, employer to, to take back. You can email this back to the employer. Basically put in there the information, uh, the facts from the very first page, you can download that and print that on into this um, into this packet, and also it puts those scenarios in a generic overview at first, which is what this page shows, and then behind that detailed um, detailed scenarios, basically screen prints with descriptions behind it um, from those slides previously. One of the other things that this tool does is where you could change that funding arrangement. You could also switch that funding arrangement from a defined benefit to a defined uh, contribution. So that way the employer would be able to see what the impacts to their bottom line uh, would be if they did flatten out their rates or flatten out their premium uh, contribution and uh, go the path of a private exchange. So the next tool I'm going to uh, talk to you is the My Benefits Private Exchange. This is the private exchange solution that Highmark put in place. We've actually had this in place for about 18 months. Uh, so I wanted to just give a, a generic, this is a screenshot of what the home page looks like, uh, and this is a, a real live active uh, platform. There are a lot of players in the market and a lot of capabilities that you have to look into when you're, when you're looking into this space. And at Highmark, we, we did a, a very intense, uh, about six months, six month review of all the capabilities and all the players in the market. And as we continue down the path with our chosen vendor, we still continue to do these assessments to make sure that um, the market hasn't changed to a point where we have to bring in another uh, partner or look out and, and maybe go out and talk to uh, um, a Aon or a Mercer or a Willis to, to hit a different market segment. I think um, Howard and Paul, they were really hitting it on the head saying that you may not have a, one solution to hit all of your markets. There may be different solutions as you go across different markets. And one of the things I want to call out in this slide specifically is private exchanges are, are not cookie cutter. There are many different things that exchanges do. For the most part, the things that everyone sees and everyone talks about is the shopping portion of those exchanges. That is where most of these private exchanges live. They have a really uh, robust shopping experience to, to capture that, um, you know, that consumer when they come into the platform. They, they get through a shopping experience and then uh, the carrier or whomever is responsible for doing the, uh, the portions after the fact. The thing that you really want to take into account or any carrier such as Highmark has taken into account is what are the capabilities that we need and that we're looking for? And there's really not um, a solution that is the, the overall right solution for everyone in the market. There are needs that each, uh, each carrier would have. And this slide is a really generic example of what those are. So shopping, enrollment, employee self-service, billing, payroll, do you want to do defined contribution accounting? Is the, do you want to do self-funding accounting? Uh, and then all, 
the, the one of the most important pieces is the administration for the employer. So my next slide shows uh, similar to to um, where where Howard's slide was with where these vendors are across the market, who's more carrier focused towards who has the capabilities that are from a basic shopping experience to a more comprehensive end-to-end um, -end solution. And as I said earlier, there's no best in class. It just depends in general what someone would be looking for. So if there was just a shopping only that uh, a carrier or a, an employer would be interested in, there are a lot of options in that space. Uh, as you get towards the right side of the capability chart here, you see that there are, there are options that are a little bit more than shopping. And there are some that are uh, a name that I, I always like to throw out there, Benefit Focus. Uh, Blue's plans have been using Benefit Focus for years for enrollment. Benefit Focus this year came out with a marketplace. So now they have a shopping and enrollment tool. So these, uh, these platforms are evolving as we speak. So tomorrow in my slide, I may have to grab one of these names and move it further right or move it further up. But uh, I think Howard touched on that also with his slide with the grids, the, the grid of where these vendors are and what they're doing. Uh, those slides will change constantly. These uh, vendors are evolving. They're, uh, they're combining. They're being bought out. And, and it's, uh, it's a really interesting market. And, um, you know, it's, a, it's actually an exciting time for, for healthcare in, in, my, in my eyes. So I want to talk about specifically the, the opportunity that uh, Highmark sees in this marketplace and what we've done. And uh, basically for our My Benefits platform, we partnered with Array Health. Um, that they are a software vendor from Seattle, Washington. They, if we go back to the slide prior to this, they're in the upper right quadrant. Um, this is what Highmark was looking for. We were looking for something that was an end-to-end -end solution, and we wanted them to be truly carrier-focused. Uh, their, our platform is single carrier only. It's all blue products uh, on our platform. And we offer medical, dental, vision, critical illness, and accident uh, policies on our platform. Uh, we're also doing surveys and doing market research constantly to find out what are other products that folks want on this platform or um, they're, they're asking for. And uh, I, I kind of get a chuckle out of it all the time, but the, the number one thing that people want to see is pet insurance. And, uh, you know, Highmark's kicked around pet insurance for a long time, and, and this is definitely um, a time and place that we can throw a, a pet product out onto this platform and get it exposure into the market where these consumers really want to see it. Uh, the other thing that I want to touch on is there are vendors that are um, focused on defined contribution, and then there are some that are focused on fully insured. Our platform does both. Uh, we, could, we could satisfy a fully insured group or a self-insured group, and also the, the platform accommodates any group size. When we first got into the space, we thought the sweet spot of this private exchange market would be the smaller groups under 50. But what we're seeing is the under 50s are interested, but the, the bigger groups are more interested and are moving faster. They, they see the savings in large scale that they can have from a defined contribution, and they also see the opportunity of the ease of administration on a platform such as ours. And one last thing I want to talk about before uh, we turn it over for some Q&A is some of the big high-level learnings that, that we've seen uh, as Highmark as um, of the rollout of our private exchange. So number one is the, the education of employers to the advantage of a private exchange. Uh, it's new, it's shiny, it's technology. A lot of folks are afraid of it. Um, this is the evolution of healthcare um, in my eyes. So I feel like um, we're on the cutting edge of where things are going. And I believe in a few years, people will look back and say, oh, you, you, know, you buy your, your products that way. Everyone else is doing this electronically through exchanges or through retail platforms uh, at carriers and things like that. I think this shift is going to happen fast and furious. And um, you know, we're strapping on our seatbelt right now. <laughs> um, 
we've seen, a, a, for the most part, all of the groups that we've transitioned from the uh, from a traditional plan to a private exchange, uh, they're very comfortable with after the after the first few uh, enrollments that they're very comfortable with going back in, ch checking out their plan options, seeing what else, uh, what other opportunities there might be for them. This is truly like an Amazon.com type of uh, environment we're getting into with our healthcare, and uh, people are very comfortable already out on the internet searching and shopping. Um, and this is just the next step for that shopping moving into healthcare. Uh, I mentioned that we thought smaller groups would be more interested faster, but we're seeing that that trend is getting into larger groups a lot faster. Small groups are definitely interested, but the larger groups are um, are definitely um, are, are moving that space fast. Um, the most common feedback we've gotten from surveys is that employer or employees like to to have all of these ancillary products and all of these options in front of them right now. And they, in most cases, they haven't had the opportunity to have all of those different products in front of them uh, in, one, in one sitting. So now they actually have that opportunity to take their, to select their medical, their dental, their vision, their um, critical illness and accident policy right there uh, all together and, um, you know, seamless. So, the, the one last point, and I, I don't have detail on this, but it's interesting for the employee purchasing, and, and this was a really like an eye opener for us as we get into public exchanges and we get into uh, all these other private exchange types of how are people going to purchase and what are they going to purchase. And I, I think the easiest way to explain it is um, there's really no rhyme or reason to what we've seen. Uh, we have. Uh, over 6,000 members that have gone through uh, enrollment on the platform, and the, the trends are um, if, if people are picking higher deductible plans, they're coupling them with critical illness and accident policies, but for the most part, when that's happening, it, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot. Sometimes it happens uh, in blue-collar world, sometimes it happens in, in law firms. So the, the, the shift in the purchasing is really the easiest way for me to explain it is um, how do people feel that day and when they, uh, when they go out to, to purchase is really how they're going out there and, and, and buying these products. It's, it's a really interesting trend. The one great thing that I've seen with our platform is that uh, enrollment from start to finish usually takes around 10 to 15 minutes tops. And there's a, a lot of information that people are digesting in a short period of time. And I, and I, and I, I guess I, I lean on the fact that people are now shopping so much online and they're so used to this that they're okay with their health insurance being out there on their mobile phone or on a tablet or when they're, uh, you know, sitting on their patio that they can go out and shop for, for their coverage, uh, not sitting in their, you know, at their desk or uh, having an HR person sit with them and go through these things. I think it's a really interesting shift and, um, Definitely interested to seeing how the next um, 12 to 18 months goes for, for the industry.